care. We're going to graph, but when we graph this, we're going to look around the values of zero. And we're going to look around, so we're going to look around the values of zero and around the values of uh, approaching from plus and minus and doing this. And so let's kind of crunch through this. I'm going to have very specific values. So what's the number? So we're going to do, let's do positive up top. And so this is pretty close to zero. So if I plug in 0 0.01, put it in here, I'm going to get the value of, I'll actually have you give me at least one of these. If I plug in 0 0.1 into here, into this function, what do I get? Give me one, I'll give you the rest. So x of 0 0.1 equals So yeah, here I get 10. Here I'll get minus 10. If I did even closer to zero, oops. Go ahead and do this, I'm okay with that. So this is extremely close to zero from the positive. Oh, so let me, I don't know if I explained this. This is zero coming in from the negative side. So that means value is less than that. And this is zero coming in from the positive side. So that means values before that. Um, I'll write that out a little bit more clearly so you have it in the notes. Um, so here, if I did this, this would be uh, 1,000, and this would be minus 1,000. And then here, if I typed in something relatively large, let's just put in 100. Here, if I put in 100, I get 0 0.01. And if I put in minus 100, I get 0 point, or negative 0 0.01. Zoom out and write a couple things. So this means as it approaches approach zero from the left side or values that are less than it. Another way of writing this is x goes to zero negative. My y is my y is actually going to go to as I get smaller and smaller in the negative side, just these two, my y is going to go to minus infinity, right? And as x goes from 0 to the positive side, my y values keep getting bigger and bigger. And so this goes to oops, positive infinity. And then the other two I need to write out. As x goes to infinity, this number gets close to 0. So if y goes to 0. And then as x goes to negative infinity, well, it's still going to get closer to zero. So if I get a negative uh, uh, 1,000, this is going to be negative 0. 0. 0. 0.001, right? And so this is still going to zero. And so what we're going to be looking at is these kind of behaviors of what happens to use this the graph. Now, we know what the graph looks like. We've already done it before. It comes through the point one one, it comes up to infinity here, and kind of goes out to zero here. Same thing here. And so this is what the graph looked like. And so we knew how to graph this one. We've already done this one. So let's get into our rules. All right. So let's get into our rules, and then we'll learn how to do this. All right. So. So we're going to talk about asymptotes. And so we're going to use these asymptotes to graph something. So f, x equal a is a vertical asymptote of a function if, if y approaches a negative x from infinity over this, if it approaches from the left to right side. So here, um, So here we'll have x approaches a from the left and right side, y goes to infinity. So that means right here, if this was my a, y would come up and go straight up and doesn't hit it. And then y would come up and go straight up and doesn't hit it. Here, if it goes to negative infinity at my a, means it comes in like this. Um, and so the vertical asymptotes is parts where, and you can actually have, you can, as we, as we've seen before,
whole, you can have a mixture, right? Here, my, I have a vertical. So here we'd say well, this is a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, right? Because when I walk up to it, it, it explodes. And here we have one going to positive infinity, one going to negative infinity. And you can obviously have, and if we graphed one over minus x, it would be just this flipped, right? And so you can have it the other way around, okay? So vertical asymptotes are points where it's points, they're x, uh, x equals a's, where the graph just doesn't pass for any reason, okay? At least in rational functions. Here, horizontal asymptotes is, um, is the behavior as, as y equals some, some function of x. And so uh, y equals b of a function. So here, if I have y equals b, it means the horizontal asymptote, sorry, I can say this very correctly, is a horizontal line in which um, x approaches infinity. Let me just put two of them in. Let me do, let me draw them and then it's easier to explain. So here, as x goes infinity, it goes to b. So here, if this is my b value, my x gets really close to it and times I'll level off. That's what it means to be a horizontal asymptote. In the context of this book and of what's going on for the rational functions, it is okay to pass it. So here, if I was going to a negative infinity, it is okay to go through the line. Unlike the verticals, you can, the, these will go through, but they'll tend to level off and not touch it on the side. And so the vertical asymptotes almost never cross because it's a function, so it can't, right? But they'll either shoot up or shoot down, depending on uh, at your A values. But horizontal asymptotes are just kind of what the end behavior is. Where does it, where does this thing kind of level off at, right? And so it'll level off at B, and so it goes to B. And this will level off at B and go to B. Um, Okay, and so rational functions of this form um, can be can be graphed by transforming one over x. So we learned how to do all those transformations of graphs. So we learned how to transform graphs. So if it's if it's just a rational function of ax plus b over cx plus d, you can completely achieve this by transforming the graph one over x. And we'll actually do an example of that. So let's do that. All right. And here, I want you to state domain and range um, as well. And that should help you out. Okay, so let's do this. All right, so let's write this. So here I have f of x equals 2 over x minus 3. All right, so I'm going to pull out the 2. And this is 1 over x minus 3, and I'm going to just put x minus 3 in parentheses. And so here, I can pull the 2 out front. That's perfectly OK. And then I have this. And so what does this mean? Well, what do we have here? Well, we have a vertical stretch by 2, remember? If I'm multiplying my function, here's my function, because here I have 2 over 1 over x, right? So that'd be 2 times this function. So that means a vertical stretch by 2. So stretch, hold on, nope, stretch by two, and this means move it to the right by three, right? Remember our, our um, translations, pushing it over? So it means it moved it by the right by three. Okay, so what do we have here? So I'm just gonna take my, I'm going to take what was, let me just do this in a different color. I'm going to take, yeah. So here I'm going to graph pink. One over x. One over x goes to here, it looks like that, goes like that. So here's my one over x. So back to black. So I need to move this over. One, two, three. Uh, not three. 
One, two, three. This is three. And what am I moving over? This asymptote. This is a vertical asymptote. So I'm moving over this vertical asymptote right here. So the vertical asymptote in this case is at x equals three because the vertical asymptote, uh, asymptote here, now, let me actually write it in the vertical asymptotes in this cute pink color. So the vertical asymptote here occurs at x equals zero. Notice this is where this is not allowed, or, or notice where this is not allowed. I can't have zero in my domain. And my horizontal asymptote right now is y equals zero. We'll, I'll, we'll go into why that is later. And so here I moved over my vertical asymptote. I'll go back to black. Over three. So it's over here at three. And my horizontal asymptote doesn't change. Um, I'll leave this at y equals zero. Because I haven't moved it up or down any, right? So what do I have here? Well, it's going to be two higher, so we're going to mark those instead of one, we're going to go to two. And then we just kind of go like this, and like this, and it stays at the asymptote, so it just gets really close. And so here I've graphed, I've graphed the new one. So all I did was stretch it up by two and move it over by three. All right, uh, so do horizontal strategy, do horizontal asymptotes matter as much in terms of the graphs? They, they, they de the horizontal asymptote just tells you, this just tells you um, at very large values of x where it goes. The vertical asymptotes tend to be more important, but so they, so does it matter as much? Yeah, uh, it matters, but just the, uh, these ones are very, very important. Uh, the vertical ones are more, the vertical ones have stronger rules. I'll just put it that way. Okay. All right, so let's do this one. So here, if I give you this, how the junk are we gonna make this look like? How are we gonna make this look like uh, some transformation of f of x, right? Because remember, Okay, we're going to start with f of x equals 1 over x, and I want to make this look like a translation of that. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to divide x plus 2. I'm going to divide my numerator by my, uh, divide my numerator by my denominator. Now, this might seem kind of crazy when you just first do it. And here I'm actually just going to do long division just because it makes, <laughs> it's, because it's just so, it'd be, It'd be longer to set up the synthetic, I guess. Plus six, and so I'm left with a negative one. Um, and why do I do that? Because now I can write this as three plus negative one over x plus two. Here I have my quotient um, and my remainder. And so this, hold on, this is the same as 3x plus 5 over x plus 2. Remember how I showed you how to do that? How to write it this way? And so here I have 3 plus 1 over my remainder. Or so 3 plus negative 1 over this. So this is my quotient. This is my remainder. This is my divisor. This is my p. This is my px. This is my dx. This is my qx. And this is my rx over my dx. Because you still have to divide it. But once I get it into this form, so all you do is divide and you'll get but once I get it into this form, what do I have? I have negative one, one over x plus two plus three. So what am I doing here? What I'm doing here is I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna flip it. So flip vertically. So I'm gonna flip vertically or reflect across the x-axis. I'm gonna move it to the right by two, and I'm gonna move it up by three. Up by three. 
And so my vertical asymptote, since I'm moving it to the, oops, no, 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 no. I said right, left. We're going to the left. Remember, you go the other direction. So we're going to move one, two this way. This is my new, because remember, it's backwards for the x. So this is my new vertical asymptote would be x equals minus two. My new horizontal asymptote, since I moved everything up by three. So this is going to be y. Um, put equals equals, just confusing. Y equals three. And so my horizontal asymptote is going to be right here at three. And then I flip things. And so, um, so here I'm going to go through this point and this point. And so it's going to be flipped. Okay. So this is how. And so if you're given something like this, you can graph it by, you just divide out, um, you just divide the numerator, divide the denominator, and then you can rewrite it like this. And then here I can, this is just transformations on one over X. All right. Let's go over some of the more fun rules for, and uh, finding asymptote of any size. And then we'll do three of these and that will be today's lesson. Okay. All right, so we're finding asymptote for any function. So let's pretend we have any BCD, right? The vertical asymptotes occur at x equal a where a is a zero in the denominator. So the vertical asymptotes are all the zeros for the bottom polynomial. The horizontal asymptote depends on your polynomial size here, right? If, if n is greater than m, there are no horizontal asymptotes, okay? So basically, let me give you an example. If I have x to the fifth over x to the third, um, there'll be no horizontal asymptotes in this. And the reason is, is when I divide this out, I still have a polynomial of positive degree. And so that will still have, it'll be, it'll be closer to being looking like um, the end behavior will just look like, it will mimic a lot more like x squared. That's what it really will mean, right? This is what that means. So um, if n is greater than m, right? So here, if I have one over x is what we've been doing, the beginning asymptotes at zero. If I have x over, x squared or x cubed over x to the seventh, right? All of them will have a horizontal asymptote at zero. Now, if it's the same, if I have x over x, it's just gonna be the coefficients here. And so here, if I have x over x, this will be, a, I have a horizontal asymptote at one. If I have three x squared over two x squared, that, you know, and so on, just looking at the highest order, my horizontal asymptote will occur at three halves. And the reason is, is that notice here as x gets extremely large. So here, as x gets extremely large, because remember horizontal asymptotes still at the end. In this case, the higher order will always be so much larger than this one. So if I put in a thousand, this becomes so much larger than x, it's gonna zero out, right? It's just gonna zero out. If it's if it's the same, it's just going to be whatever ratio of this fraction is. So if I put a thousand in for each one of these, the x squared terms are the same, right? And so the just three halves is where the thing's going to go. And then you'll have your other terms kind of do that. Here, if I put a thousand in here, this is just so much larger than this. It's just going to start behaving like x squared. So um, the only one small caveat here, and I won't I won't give you this on the exam. Um, if you have n, if n is one less than, if n is one less than this, and so here, um, n minus n is one. So let me be, there's a slant asymptote by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So here, if I have x over x, See if I can, I haven't done this yet. It'll be x over 
or x squared over x, right? So here n in, n in this case is two, m is one. These give us line asymptote, or if I have x to the fifth over x to the fourth, these give us line asymptote. We'll deal with one of those, but that's not what you're gonna see. So here's just a lot of rules. So here's just a lot of rules. And so when you take your exam, have up the rules, right? And follow the rules. We'll actually go through the rules and we'll do this nice and slow. And I give you very clear steps of what to do. So we'll go through them and do the things in the orders. Um, all right, so step one, factor both the numerator and denominator. So the first thing you want to do is factor it as cleanly as possible, okay? That's the first thing you wanna do. So we'll just write step one. So step one, we're gonna factor this. So here, um, the top part doesn't really factor, so I'll have that. But the bottom part does, right? Because I'll have x plus 5 and then x plus 5, okay? All right, so I factored that. So step one, done. Step two, where are the, uh, where are the zeros of the numerator, okay? So find the zeros of the numerator. So where, so if I take this uh, step two real quick, um, where does 5x plus 21 equal to zero? So this is my numerator. Well, that equals that negative 21 fifth and zero. So, because I want to solve, I want to solve where this is. So this is an x-intercept. It just gives you a point, gives you a point to help you graph stuff. So this is an x-intercept. Okay, so we've done that. Find the, all the asymptotes using the above box. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so what do we have here? So here we have, let's, let me zoom out just a bit. All right, here, we want to find the vertical asymptote. So that's where this is zero. So where is the bottom zero at? Well, at x equals minus five, right? So here, so at three, the numerator equals, so x equals minus five, that is a vertical asymptote. Why? Because that's where the zeros are here. So x equals oops, minus five, right? So that's my vertical asymptote. Notice I have it twice, right? This will give me, this will be zero, negative five, this will be zero, negative five, so that's my vertical asymptote. My horizontal asymptote, so what do I have here? I have x over x squared, and so that looks like this. So here, m, the one on the bottom, is greater than the one on the top. And so here I have a vertical asymptote at y equals zero. So that's my horizontal asymptote, okay? Um, okay, the next thing we wanna do is to determine the behavior around the asymptote. All right, so I have my asymptotes, I have a point. And I want to determine the behavior around that. So how do I do that? Is um, let me see if I can do this without getting anyone lost. <laughs> Step four. All right. So uh, around the vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptotes, we know what will happen. Let's just do the vertical real quick. So the vertical asymptotes are Um, you want to do, so the vertical asymptote is negative five. So I have negative five as my vertical asymptote. But I really want to know what the function does as I come in from the left side and from the right side. So I'm going to split it like this. Okay. All right. And so how do I determine what's going to happen here? Well, I look at this right here. And I'm going to plug in a value around negative five. So here, I'm just gonna put in like 4.9, right? Because that's something to the left of, or oops, that's not what I wanna do here. I wanna plug in negative six, no, negative 5.1, okay? Because negative 5.1 is slightly to the left of my asymptote at minus five. Because I wanna find the behavior around here, so. Slightly to the left would be a little bit more negative. 
So if I plug that into here, all I care about is the sign. So if I plug in negative 5 up top, or negative 5.1 up top, this is going to be close to negative 25 plus 21. So the top part here is going to be negative, right? And on the bottom, here if I plug in negative uh, 0.5, I'm going to get a negative number times a negative number, right? So I'm going to have a negative times a negative. So overall, overall, what's the sign here? So negative of a negative of a negative. So I get overall it's negative. And so if it's overall negative, it's going to go to y is going to go to minus infinity. We'll do we'll do this multiple times, trust me. Um, hold on, did I mess up something? Is negative 12 point. Oh, I didn't put in the negative here. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, here, if we're going to go slightly above it, it'll be minus 4.9. This is still looks a lot close, like negative 25. And so this is still going to be negative up top. Here on the bottom, this will be like 0.1 and 0.1. So I'll have a plus and a plus, right? And so overall, this will be negative. So that means y goes to negative infinity again. All right, so now we have everything to graph it. So now we can do step five, I'll just sketch the graph. We'll do three of these, and then you'll run through a couple. Five. All right, so we have points. So negative 21 fifths is just a little bit over negative four, right? So one, two, three, four. So just a little bit here. I have this point. I know what my I know what what happens here is I have an asymptote. I have a horizontal asymptote here. And so and I know I go from to negative infinity as I approach that. So here I'm gonna over way over here it's gonna start at zero. It's gonna come down and I know it goes to negative infinity. Here on the right side I know it starts at negative infinity. I know I go through this point. But I also know it kind of levels back off to zero. And so here I've done a rough sketch. All right, so I've roughly sketched this in. And if you type it into Wolfram Alpha, it roughly looks like this. So let's do this two more times. And then we'll let you guys give it a try on the homework. All right. So remember step one, step one is the factor. So let's factor both top and bottom. All right, so I'm gonna factor both top and bottom. So here I get, um, I'm just gonna, just for time's sake, I'm just gonna do it. Here it's two and x plus four. Notice that these multiply up to this. And then here if I have, Four that gives me eight x minus one gives me minus seven x. So this this ends up working out. On the bottom, the bottom is much easier to factor. It's x plus two, x minus one. All right. Two. Let's get some. Let's find our x intercepts. So our x intercept is where this or the top part is zero. So the top part will be zero when x is equal to uh, so when x is minus four, y is zero, right? And when x is equal to a half, with my two zeros, it's also zero. So that gives me two points on the graph. And in fact, let's put those points on. So it'd be half and zero and negative four, four and zero. So these are two points I know exist on my graph. All right. Step three, let's find my intercepts. So my vertical asymptotes is everywhere this, everywhere the bottom. The new the denominator is zero. So that would be at x equals minus two and and in this case x equals one. And so I'm going to draw both of those. In. So x equal one is an asymptote. And x equals minus two is an asymptote. All right, let's look at our horizontal asymptote. And do that. We'll go back to our rules. All right. So my horizontal asymptote. So I I have 
um, 2 over 2. So n is 2 and m is 2 in this case. So here I'll have, they're equal to each other. So the asymptote exists at the fraction of the fraction of the two ratios of them. So let's go back to this. And so the horizontal asymptote here is 2 over 1. So I have y equals 2. Mm -hmm. Yep, someone got the right answer. So here we'll have that. And we'll just go ahead and draw that in. All right, step four. We're going to want to find our uh, what happens. So we're going to take our vertical asymptotes. So we're going to find the plus and minus of them. Um, so we're going to have negative 2 minus. We're going to have negative 2 plus. We're going to have 1 minus and 1 plus. That means on the left and right sides of this. All right. So let's plug in values and see what happens. So. I'm going to put in something slightly less. So into here, I'm going to put in something slightly less than negative 2, so negative 2.1. And all I care about is the sign. All I'm caring about is the sign. And so let's do this. If I plug in negative 2 into this, this will definitely be negative, right? Because I'll have a negative times a negative. So that's definitely negative. Here, if I plug in negative 2 into here, or negative 2.1, I'm going to have negative 2 plus a 4, so that's going to be positive, right? Here, if I plug in negative 2.1 into here, um, by definition, that would be negative, because that's the one we're wanting to make slightly more negative, so that's negative. So I'm, And here, if I plug in a negative 2.1 in here, I have a negative times a negative, so this would be negative, right? So here, we're just going to write this as sign, and here, I'm going to write y, where y goes, okay? And so here, I have... Um, negative on top, positive on the bottom, so it would be negative overall, so y is going to go to negative infinity. All right, let's do the same thing for positive, uh, so slightly more positive, and so in this case, I'm going to plug in negative 1.9. Oh, the sign thing just clicked. It's, yeah, it's actually easier to see with the bigger one, right? <laughs> So here, if I plug in negative 1.9, these actually, since these are neither of these are really close to 2, these are the same, right? I'll have a negative number plus minus a negative number of that. Negative 1 plus 2, that's still going to be positive. Yeah, so we're still good. Here, this is now positive because now when I'm adding 2, the negative 1 is going to be positive. So I have a positive on the bottom. And then here, I'm going to have a negative on the bottom. And so negative plus a negative will be negative. So here I have negative over negative, so that's positive. So this one's going to go to positive infinity. Okay. Let's do the same thing for the ones. Get rid of that. And let's plug in, I don't know, 0 0.9, slightly less than 1. So 0 0.9 times 2 minus 1, well, that's still positive. And then if I have a positive number plus a positive number, that's definitely positive. Um, over on the bottom, I'll have a positive number plus a positive. That's positive. And then since this is slightly, so 0 0.9 minus 1, that is negative. Okay. And so here I have positive, 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 negative. So this means overall it's negative. And so that one's going to go to a negative infinity. And then here for this, we'll just plug in 1.1. 1 .1. So 2 minus 1, that's positive. A positive plus a positive, that would be definitely positive. So that's positive that's positive. Over here, I'll have positive plus positive, so that's positive, and then 1.1 uh, 1 .1 minus 1, and well, that'll still be positive, so I have all positive, so that goes to positive infinity. Okay? All right, so now we're going to use this data. All right, so I'm going to start, I'm going to start here at my asymptote. I'm going to come in for my asymptote. I'm going to go through this point, because I have to go through this point, because that's one of my points. And then here, as I approach this, as I approach x equals 2 from the left side, I want to go down to negative infinity. And that just makes it easier to crunch down this way. All right. Now, from when I'm coming in now on the right side, it's going to want to come from positive infinity. So I'm starting from positive infinity. I'm going to go to this one, which will go to negative infinity. So I'm going to come down like this from positive infinity. I know I want to go through this point right here. So go through this point. And I know I want to go to negative infinity, so I'll go down like that. And then here, I start at positive infinity. 
And I know I just want to follow my asymptote. And so it looks like this. All right. So for this one, I'm actually going to check it. I'm actually going to check it in Wolf of Mouth for, for one second. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, nice. <laughs> Hi, you. Let's graph this. Let's graph this beastie thing. All right. So I have the quantity of 2x squared plus 7x plus minus 4. divided by the quantity of x squared plus x minus 3. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's multiply. I was like, that doesn't look right at all. <laughs> oh, your graph sucks. <laughs> Um, so, but yeah, you can see how it looks like it, but it, it, if it, if it's a better graph, I wish I could tell the plot what to do. I bet there's a way to do it. I just don't know how to do it. So, all right, let's just do our last one. We'll go slightly. Desmos.com. I should try Desmos.com. Everyone tells me to try that one. Let me just try it real quick. I'm going to go like two minutes over today. Um, we've ended earlier every other day this week, so I don't feel terrible about it. And besides, I don't want you to get lost on this. Was it Desmos? Let's go that. D E S. Desmos. Dot com. That's a thinking. Come on, man. Desmos. Desmos.com is now dead. I'll try to find you with it in a second. Just Google Desmos. You're probably right. Des, let's just Google Desmos. All right. All right. Uh, start graphing. Wow. Hey, look. That works so much better. Um, yeah, so this looks exactly like as we done it, okay? And so with just using these very simple uh, techniques, we've learned how to graph this excessively well, right? We've actually excessively graphed this really well. Um, all right, so let's do the very last one. And so we'll go like maybe five, five to 10 minutes over. I'm sorry about that. I, well, let's just do this real quick. All right, so step one, we're gonna factor top and bottom. Um, so we'll factor top and bottom. So we have x minus five, x plus one over x minus three. All right, uh, step two, we're gonna find our asymptotes, or, or no, our intercepts. So my intercepts is where the top part equals zero. So the top parts equal zero at negative one and zero, and then at five and zero. So I know I have those two. So at negative one, I have a point, and at five, one, two, three, four, five, I have a point. Two, three. Let's go ahead and do my uh, vertical asymptote. Well, this is y equals cannot equal uh, positive three, right? So that's my vertical asymptote. I only have one here. My horizontal asymptote. So let's go through this. So I have this to be one less than this. And so here, if it's one less than this, this is the case where we get a slant asymptote. We don't have a, it's not strictly. So technically, we have no horizontal asymptote, but we have a slant one according to this. And so this is none. But we have a slant one, and that occurs. And here you just plug in x minus three, and we just do this division. Um, x squared minus four x minus five. If I crunch through this, I'll skip the crunching since we're over time. You'll get it to be x minus one minus eight all over x minus three. This right here is your slant asymptote. 
So here, in the x minus one, so you just graph, you graph this line, y equals this line. That's your slant asymptote. So uh, one, and then it has this, and so it looks like this. That's your slant asymptote. I don't, I won't give you this on the quiz. And then, then we just need to do step four real quick. Um, so step four, we're gonna have three plus, or we'll have three negative and three plus. Here, if I plug in something slightly less than three, um, slightly less than three, so this will be negative. This will be positive, and this will be negative. And if I plug in something slightly more than three, it's still negative, it's still positive. Those are the same, and this will now be positive. And so negative, negative, negative. So this goes to positive infinity. I have an even number of negatives, and here it goes to negative infinity. And so that incurs at x equals three. So let me type in, let me chug through that asymptote. Okay. All right, so I know, my graph's gonna follow this asymptote right here. It goes through this, and then I'm gonna go up to positive infinity. Then I'm gonna start at negative, in, so I'm gonna start at negative infinity here, and then go through this point and go through that. And since we have decimals up, we'll just graph it real quick and just check that it's what we got before. All right. All right, so this is now just x. Minus three. All right, and then we'll have what was up top? X squared minus four X minus five. There's nothing here. Ta-da, and there we go. We have a graph that looks excessively like the one we just had. So that's how you can graph any rational functions. So the steps are, the steps are factor it, take the numerator, make a zero. Those are points on your graph. Just use those. So I'm pointing with my finger. Factor it, take the numerator, set it equal to zero. Those are two uh, points on your graph. Take the denominator, set it equal to zero. That's a vertical asymptote. Figure out the horizontal asymptotes. And then around the vertical asymptote, just determine your behavior. And then you're good to go. Okay.